G'day, I'm Warwick Schiller and recently I've been talking quite a bit about only asking yes questions. So only asking questions you can get a, a yes answer to. And in this video I want to show you, I want to talk about a, a venting horse that came to a, a clinic in England a few years ago that was quite forward, like really wants to go. <laughs> they have a hard time slowing him down sort of thing. And by the end of the clinic, the first time we asked, the first time we rode him bridleless. So I, well, by the end of the clinic we took the bridle off and she walked, trotted, cantered and slowed to a halt from a canter with only her seat the first time we'd ever tried it. And what I'm going to do here is just walk you through the, 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 the timeline of how that happened on the you know under the assumption that we're only asking yes questions. So the first morning uh, I, I have when I do a clinic, I have uh, 12 people in the clinic, and at the time, I now have groups of three for two hours, but at the time I was doing a morning session and afternoon session, so I had six horses in the morning session, six horses in the afternoon session. And this particular girl named Emily had booked two horses in for the clinic, but one of them wouldn't get on the trailer, so she's got this, the, the, the one horse in both sessions. And in the morning session, we did some groundwork, and when I asked him to go around me on the ground, I couldn't get him to stop. This horse had no ability to go from being down to being up to being down. He was either down or he was up, but there was no in between. And with him, I actually had to, he was going, I couldn't get him to stop going around me. I actually had to back up against the fence so that he would go around me and, you know, do a half circle, come around and stop. And so I just spent the first morning asking him to go from here around to here and the fence was stopping him. So... I was asking him a yes question. I knew I could get him to stop because there was going to be a fence involved. And, and that took, I wouldn't say quite a bit of doing, but you know, I, like I said, he, he didn't make any trends. He couldn't go from relaxed to responsive to relaxed. And that's the big key to everything. So come the first afternoon, so the, the afternoon, the first day of the clinic, Emily comes in, hops on, and she's sitting there on him. And I said, okay, what I want you to do right now is just work on your lateral flexions. Just pick up here and bend his head until he stand still and initially he didn't really want to bend his head he just kind of walk in circles and he'd finally soften and stand still got that on one side got it on the other side and that's all we did all afternoon i'm not saying we stood there and bent his head back and forth you know there was breaks in between but all we got done the first afternoon was got to where we could pick up here and he could stand still and bend his head. Because what he'd do, you'd pick up and around and he'd just walk around and around and around and around and around. And once he moved his feet, he could not come to a stop. Couldn't, had a hard time finding that stop. So that's all we got done afternoon. So come back the next morning and we start out and we start working on that again. Can you bend your head? And, and you know, it probably took maybe half an hour to get back to where the the point we're at at the end of yesterday afternoon. So what took us four hours yesterday is now taking us half an hour. Then we start working on asking him to move. So can you bend your head? Then we want to disengage him. So can you slide your leg back and have him move off your leg? And then when you take your leg off, can he come to a stop? Well, initially he wouldn't move off your leg. So he's very dull to the leg. Once we've got him moving off the leg, then you take your leg off. And once again, around and around and around and around and around he'd go before he'd finally come to a stop. So that took us till lunchtime the second day. So we haven't even walked forward. Okay. We've got the lateral flexion working. We've got the disengage working. And that whole, for me, that whole lateral flexion, disengage, release your leg, back to lateral flexion, that is a relaxed to responsive to relaxed transition. And he could not do that. Once you got this horse's feet moving, he had a hard time stopping them again. Okay. So now we've basically spent eight hours up to that point in time. And like I said, it wasn't just drilling on him. You'd get it right and you'd sit there for a while and rub on him or whatever, but then we'd do it again. So we come back the afternoon of the second day of the clinic. And all we can do at this point in time is bend his head while he's standing still both sides, bend his head, disengage him, have him responsive off our leg, take our leg off and have him stop and be relaxed. So relax, responsive, relaxed transitions. We come back after lunch the second day. I said, okay, Emily, so let's go ahead and ask him to walk on a loose rein. So completely loose rein. She said, well, he doesn't, I don't usually ride him on a loose rein. I said, well, we're going to ride him on a loose rein. And so she asks him to walk and he walks off and then he... Ooh, gets a bit wound up and goes for a trot. So we reach down and bend him back around until he comes to a stop. 
and relaxes. And that was quite easy because we had, you know, that's all that is, is an energetic trend from uh, energetic to relaxed transition. We'd spent basically eight hours working on that standing still. And so then I'd ask him to walk again. And there were times when he'd be walking and then he'd break off into a trot and she'd bend him back around. But after a while, she could, then instead of bending to a stop, she could just bend him back to a walk and he'd relax. And after a while, Oscar walks around relaxed on a loose rein. Has never done it in his life, just walk around a loose rein. So then we start working on the trot. I said, go ahead and ask him to trot. And she goes to gather the reins. I said, no, no, he's going to do it on a loose rein. She goes, well, he doesn't really trot on a loose rein. I said, yeah, well, we're going to do that. So she asks him to trot, and he goes, trot, 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 and he rolls off into a canter. So we bend him back down till he relaxes again, and we do that transition quite a bit. Then by the time it comes, so now he can walk on a loose rein and control himself. He can trot on a loose rein and control himself, and it's very easy to bend him back to a stop. So he's, he's teetering in the middle of that relaxed, responsive, relaxed, space okay then it's time to ask him to canter so she's trotting around. I said go ahead and ask him to canter and and she goes to shorten the reins I said no we, we're going to do this on a completely loose rein she goes well he doesn't really canter on a loose rein and I said well he's going to first time we canter him off on a loose rein he goes can to can to can to can to can we didn't make any we didn't make any corrections at the canter and so then I had her bend him, make sure she could bend him around to a stop from the canter. And we did that for a while, a lot of transitions like that. And after a while, when she was cantering around on a loose rein, he looked relaxed enough to where he could pay attention to her seat. And I said, okay, Emily, you're cantering. Just go ahead and sit and see if you'll slow down. And he's cantering along. She sits and he goes, canter, canter, trot, 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 walk, 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 stop. Okay, so he has now stopped from a canter without using the reins at all. Okay, she didn't pick the reins up at all. So after she'd done that a few times, then I went over and I pulled the bridle off. Okay, pulled the bridle off. And so this is the horse that yesterday and all his life has been kind of a runaway. And I said, just go ahead and ask him to walk. And he went for a little bit of a walk and we didn't let him walk very long because he was telling us at the walk, he was completely under control. He was totally relaxed. So I said, go ahead and ask him for a trot. She picks up a trot and he doesn't trot, you know, terribly, too terribly far because, I mean, we don't ask him to trot too terribly far because he just trots and he's nice and relaxed. And so I can tell it's all working so far. I said, go ahead and ask him to canter. She asks him to canter and he picks up the, the incorrect lead. Now she doesn't ask for a lead. She only asks for a canter. And that's another part of asking only yes questions. If you are riding a green horse and you ask for a certain lead and they get it wrong, you've got to know. Whereas if you just ask for a canter, it doesn't matter what lead they get. So he picks up the wrong lead and he kind of canters around, you know, around one end of the arena and he canters around the other end of the arena. And then he didn't look like right now we could ask him to slow down off our seat. So there's no use wasting your seat aid. There's no use trying to sit when he's not ready to sit and when he's not ready to slow down off your seat. And then at, at one point in time, he looked like, okay, I think he's ready. I said, Emily, go ahead and sit. Emily sits, he goes from a canter to a trot, to a walk, walks a little bit, and then stops. And that's the first time we have ever ridden him with nothing on his head and it worked. And so with your training, you know, you think about, we stood still for eight hours. Like I said, we didn't just drill him over and over and over for eight hours, but you know, she was in the afternoon session for four hours and did nothing but work on can I just get you to bend your head without you running around in circles, okay? And it seems like, you know, when that horse arrived at the clinic, if I had said to him, in two days, we're gonna be able to get your horse to slow down from a canter with no bridle off your seat, she would have thought I was nuts <laughs> because it seemed like too big a deal. But the, with, with all your training, the, the basic stuff, getting those beginning things, and especially that emotional regulation, that relaxed to energetic to relaxed transition, that's the, getting that part there is the, the absolute secret to the whole thing, if there's a secret, because all your problems you run into are, I either can't get my horse from relaxed to responsive, I can't get enough energy, or once it gets energy, I can't get it back down. And so that, just think about that. And so it took us eight hours before we actually walked forward, eight hours of, of training before we walked forward, but less than four hours later, we can go from a 
canter to a halt off our seat with nothing on his head on a horse that has been, you know, he was 15 years old or something rather, and he's a, you know, an Arashi eventing horse. And so uh, the whole big thing I'm saying here is just get the little things right and the big things will be really, really easy.